If the Canadians miss the playoffs, would you still consider this team a success? That and more in this week's Hockey Inside Out. Welcome to this week's show. My name is Adam Susser. Here with me today is Stu Cowan from the Montreal Gazette, CBC Daybreak's Jessica Rezak, and Chris Knuckles Nyland. Let's start the show. If the playoffs don't come to Montreal this year, fans will still look back on this season fondly as the team is already in playoff mode. On Tuesday night, the Canadians simply dominated the best team in the NHL, beating the Tampa Bay Lightning 4-2, and in the process, elevating their game to an unbelievable level. Was Tuesday night's win over the Lightning the Canadians' best game of the season? By far. I mean, it was, they played, I don't know how many biggest games of the year in a <laughs> row now. This was the biggest of the biggest, and it was their best performance. I think what really impressed me the most is there was no passengers in this game. Everybody worked hard. Everybody played well. Carey Price made some big saves in the third period to keep them in the game. It was an all-out team effort on the biggest night. It was a, I mean, it was a playoff atmosphere. It was a fun night to be in the Bell Centre, and they really, really showed up and played a fantastic game. I was impressed by the lack of panic that they had, especially in that first goal by the Tampa Bay Lightning coming kind of fluky off the skate of Max Domi. You can think, oh no, here, this is when everything's going to start to go down. But you know what? They stayed calm. They were able to find a way to get back into the game and then eventually get the lead. So I think that really showed a good character moment for this team that they didn't panic and that they had confidence in themselves that they were able to get back into the game. Yeah, it was um, one of their best performances all year. Really, they 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 checked well they skated well they had good support all over the ice they got pucks to the net they crowded the net uh they did everything you want a hockey team to do um you know it looked like they may not score at one point uh the goaltender certainly uh <laughs> well, I, I couldn't say he stood in his head i think he got in the way of the puck but, uh he he was certainly a, a surprise you know uh that game could have been a whole lot worse as far as goals against for the Lightning. But, uh, yeah, the Habs were persistent and uh, played a hell of a game. Well, you said hey, Pasquale, the goalie, 28 <laughs> years old, only his second game in the NHL. Uh, and he was fighting the puck early, but then, you know, he stopped Gallagher in a breakaway. He stopped Byron on a breakaway. One hit him in the head. One hit him in the head. That's Mete right. Shot Mete shot hit him, hit him in the head. In the head. I don't you, think he knew it hit him I don't in the think head. he did either. I don't think he, <laughs> he didn't <laughs> feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he did either, but... but it's true. I mean, it was 2-2 two -two after two periods, and Claude Julien said he spoke to the guys in the room and said, don't focus on the big picture, focus on what you need to do to get there. And they did that, and they got the big goals in the, in the third period, and it was a huge, huge, huge victory. The team was relentless, and it was emblematic of how they've played for much of the season. Do you think if they meet Tampa in the playoffs, they can beat them in a series? No. <laughs> it was a nice. Impossible? <laughs> I don't think so. I think Tampa is just too good of a team this year that the Montreal Canadiens, because they had a good game against them on Tuesday night, I don't think that they would be able to beat them in a series at all. That Tampa is, is ready for this postseason. They want to win the Stanley Cup. And they're, you know, one of the favorites, if not the favorite. They're the top team in the league for a reason. No, anything's possible. But, no, I can't see them beating Tampa in a seven-game series. I mean, the Canadiens played a perfect game game in this game and they didn't take any penalties that resulted in a power play so you got the number one power play in the league 28 percent they never got on the ice so that was a key so to try and do that four times to win four games against them in a seven game series I think is asking too much but if the games even get there to play them I think the experience the young players had the other night playing against Tampa will go a long way in the future uh, it was a playoff atmosphere it was as close to a playoff game as you're ever going to get at the Bell Center without it actually being a playoff game and the young players stood up and performed well so it was a great experience for them and I think if they get into the playoffs it'll be an even bigger experience for them moving forward yeah anything can happen in the playoffs uh, obviously you look at it on paper oh there's no way they could beat Tampa in a seven game series but you just never know. You get a hot goaltender, a guy, Carey Price, capable of doing that. Yeah, he is. But um, you just never know. A playoff series can change quick. You know, you get up, all of a sudden you come in and you're down two games. And you go, ooh, what happened? Then the pressure's on. Start gripping the stick a little tighter. Listen, is it possible? Yeah. Um, uh, do I think they'll do it? No. Um, because I don't think they're going to get in the playoffs anyway. Well, you say the first game, if they do make it, the first game in Tampa, if they steal the first game in Tampa, everything, yeah, the pressure's changes. all on Tampa, mm -hmm. it all changes. But again, seven-game series is usually the best team prevails, and the Tampa Bay Lightning are a much, much, much better team. On Monday, General Manager Mark Bergevin signed 2017 first-round draft pick Ryan Paling to a three-year entry-level contract. Do you see Paling playing with the Canadians next year? 
I think he will. I think that's one of the reasons they brought him up here instead of sending him to Laval. Even if he doesn't play this season with the Canadians, he's getting the experience of being around the team, seeing what's going on, getting a feel for the team, getting to know the guys. And I don't think they would have done that if they weren't planning on him making the team next season. But, you know, as Mark Bergeron says, the players make those decisions for him. He had a good camp last year with the evaluation camp or the, the early camp. Uh, he looked really good. He's a big kid. He's a strong kid. Uh, he looks ready to be a pro hockey player. He's mature from his years in university, so I would expect them to be there next season. What I would like them to do with Paling is similar to what they did with Jesperi Kokniemi, not sort of have a set program for him or a set plan for him to sort of let him decide what's going to happen. Uh, he doesn't have any NHL experience because he was playing uh, the U.S. college route, so he couldn't play in any preseason games or anything like that. So uh, everything is going to be brand new to him, much like Jesperi Kokniemi. So why not say this opportunity is open for you, and if you're able to show that you are able to play at this level, then it's for you. But if not, there's no pressure for you necessarily to make the team this year. Yeah, that's Bourbon's MO, right? He <coughs> says the guy will dictate whether he's here or not. So if he comes in, has a good camp, uh, shows uh, the coaching staff and management what he can do in training camp, then he'll earn a spot on this team. I think, again, he, he is more mature. He's had a couple years in college. Uh, he's not an 18-year-old kid. Physically, he's mature. He got the strength in the side, 6'2", uh, well, almost 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's one of the pieces the Canadians were missing. Now, where will he be in the lineup? Uh, you know, uh, I've always said when Deneau is the third-line center here, this team will be in good shape. Is this the beginning of what we're going to see in the future? And uh, I think it looks bright for the Canadians, um, especially up the middle. It's a... Uh, you know, mm -hmm. everybody bitching and moaning for mm -hmm. years about no center ice, but now it looks like they finally have some uh, some legitimate uh, center icemen that are going to be here for a while. And Berger, not only has he said the players will make the decision, he's shown that he will do that with Mete surprising everybody mm -hmm. making the team, Kakanyemi surprising everybody Started making the with team. Started Yeah, so if Paling, if Paling shows that he can play, and, and I think he will, he'll be with the team next season. From the moment he stepped onto the ice at training camp until now, I don't think anyone could have predicted how much Esperi Kotkaniemi would have developed. Do you think Claude Julien handled Kotkaniemi properly this season? I do. I mm -hmm. think uh, he did a good job with him. He protected him uh, uh, at times during the season when he had to. Listen, they saw... I, I think they knew this, that down the stretch, it was going to be difficult for this kid. He's an 18-year-old bone rack, <laughs> and, you know, he's got a lot of talent, and it's his first um, kick at the cat here in the NHL. He, you know, he hasn't played such a long season like this against men, and listen, he played against adults in, in Finland, but it's a bit different over here with the size of the players, the speed of the game and the smaller rink. So he's made great adjustments, and I think Julian was um, really good at handling this kid all year. And, you know, especially because every time he wanted to do something with him, there's, everybody's critiquing him. Oh, what, what's he doing with him now? It's like going on the wing. I don't think it's a good thing long term, short term. Listen, I was against this, but when you – and Campbell got me to uh, – to take a look at this. When you look at the options, and, and, and that's Delaurier, Houdon, uh, Pekka, and who's the other one? I don't know. But Weiss. <laughs> Weiss. Weiss yeah. yeah, there you go, Weiss. When you look at the options, well, yeah, then put him on the wing because I'd rather see him on the wing than those guys in the lineup. Well, I've written a few times this season that Kanyemi is Montreal's adopted son. Mm -hmm. He's their adopted hockey son, and everybody loves him like he's their son, and so they get upset when he doesn't get ice time or whatever yeah. Julian does. <laughs> everybody freaks out like a hockey parent would freak out if their kid's not getting the ice time. I think one of the problems with Canadians fans is they keep comparing the situation to Alex Galchenyuk. Kotkaniemi mm -hmm. and Alex Galchenyuk could not be more different in so many ways as far as maturity on the ice, maturity off the ice, hockey smarts, uh, just his sort of Kotkaniemi doesn't let things bother him. He's without easy, the puck. Without the puck, his play without the puck. It's night and day. So I think Julien moving him to the wing allowed him to use him more, which we saw in the game against Tampa because Nate Thompson's out there so he can put him out for defensive zone draws, which he wouldn't do if is playing center. So yeah, I think Claude Julien has handled him well. I, the kid's so confident, you're not going to break his confidence. Mm. He came in the ice after uh, practice the other day, <laughs> and Pat Hickey said to him, so you're a winger now, eh? And he looked, yeah, and an effing good one. So he's the kid's, he's got that inner confidence that uh, 
Now, don't compare him to Alex Galchenyuk. There's, there, there's no comparison between the two whatsoever. This kid's a smart kid. He's a confident kid. And Claude Julien, and he has looked tired. I mean, if you're... If you what are you look, saying? Galchenyuk's dumb and not confident? <laughs> Maybe not I so agree. Funny. I agree, Stu. No. But I think that's a big thing. It's his confidence that when you have a young player like Jesperi Kakaniemi, you don't want him to start questioning his abilities. And he hasn't done that all year. It could be because he's a little bit more confident with himself than other rookies, but it also could be the way that Claude Julien has been developing him throughout the year. And any time that he's either been a healthy scratch or now moved to the wing, it hasn't phased him, and I think that's the most important part. And I think coaching does ha have something to do with it as well. Well, some people freak out because Julien said he was tired, and the kid said he's not tired. Oh, the coach's line, no hockey player is going to say he's tired, right? <laughs> Knuckles, even though, yeah, same as they're not yeah. going to say they're hurt. So yeah. he's not going to say he's tired, even if he was tired. But the coach is around the kid every day. And it was like my last year playing. Uh, you know, I knew I was done, but I wasn't going around saying, hey, guys, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you got but they knew it, too. <laughs> I just last on Tuesday night he got checked big by I don't know who and then he got up and the, the smile on his face I don't think anyone enjoyed that check more than Jesperi Kotkaniemi. <laughs> we should all wish to be so happy in life. Uh, if the Canadians do not make the playoffs, would you still consider their season a success? Well, I, I would. Yeah, I, I wrote the column this week you saying can. I would. I mean, yeah. when you look at where this team was last year, right, Knuckles? I mean, 20 overall. Better, there was no right? like there was no hope. There wasn't yeah. hope that it was going to get better. And then all of a sudden, Bergeron makes those offseason moves, and he brings in Domi, he brings in Tatar, Kotkaniemi arrives, Carey Price starts playing like Carey Price again. So you know. Fans in the city were so spoiled with the 24 Stanley Cups and the parade's going to take the usual route. The game has changed since then. There's a salary cap involved. The, it's harder to make the playoffs. They, you know, if they miss the playoffs next year, it'll be a terrible season. Yeah. But they've taken, I mean, you know, I thought after last season, Mark Bergeron should have been fired. They didn't fire him. But they're 23 points ahead of where they were last season with two games left. And would another general manager have done a better job? I don't think so. So, yeah. you know, credit where credit's due. Bergeron has done a really good job turning this team around. They've got taken a big step forward, and, you know, we're talking about Ryan Palin coming next year, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons now for Canadians fans to have hope for the future, and that wasn't there last year. I love the fact that you actually gave Mark Bergeron Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. if you ever read and listen to you, you, you really seem like you dislike Mark <laughs> So I'm so happy you gave him a pat on the back. Are you Way to go, Bergie. Uh, are you close to requesting uh, friendship to Mark? No. No, no, I don't. And people say I don't. I just say hey, my my job is to write and call it I as I see so. it. And <laughs> last year he was he did, he did a terrible job as GM. And this year, you know, Molson gave him a chance to clean up the mess he created. Yeah, he did. And he when did no it, one wanted, when him nobody wanted to, to and Molson gave him credit to clean up his own mess. And he did. And he did. And he's and Good he did. For him. And, and he didn't panic at the trade deadline this year. He kept all his assets. He didn't throw away for a quick fix. And I think this team. That game against Tampa, if you watch that game as a Canadiens fan and you still think this season isn't a success, well, that's no. just it. There's been so many entertaining games compared to last year where you'd sit there and I think mm -hmm. a lot of people tuned out or people were not going to the game. Well, they were bad and boring. Yeah, that there was nothing to be excited about. This year, they're entertaining games and that's what sports supposed to be. And you need something to build off of. You couldn't build off of last year, but this year, they don't make the playoffs. Well, at least you say the future does seem bright. We did take a step in the right direction and then we'll see what happens next year. Did you watch again? I watched a game on TV last night and Jeff Molson was like, like right in by the first yeah. row uh, behind in the net or in the corner. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how we got those tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he knows a guy. <laughs> that is all for this week's show. We want to thank you for tuning in at home. On a scale from 1 to 10, how would you rate your satisfaction level with this year's team? Let us know in the comments section below. I'm Adam Susser, and I'll see you next Thursday. <laughs>